Hi, I'm Gene. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a really cool wood chiseled sign. And we're not going to use a CNC machine or a laser. We're just going to use a bandsaw and some hand chisels. It'll be a lot of fun. Let's get on it. Now I'm using Photoshop here, but you can use any software, even uh, Microsoft Word. And then once you go into the print files, you're going to want to size it up to size and move this into individual sheets. Once you have that, you can take them to the bench and tape them together. I'm going to trim off the edge of each sheet so that I can overlap that and get a good fit on each of these printed pieces. Taping these together, we're ready to move to the next piece. Now I'm going to use this quarter inch piece of plywood, of like birch plywood, and I'm actually going to cut these letters out on this. And what I'm going to do is take the scissors and just cut these sections out And now I'm going to use some Elmer's spray glue to uh, set these down onto the wood. This will make it really easy and also easy to take the paper back off after I'm done cutting these letters out. I'm going to be using my 9 inch wind band saw. This little guy has been a workhorse for me and is just kept doing a great job. I never regret picking this up. And I'm going to put a 3 16 blade, fine tooth blade on this, which should work great on cutting that thin birch plywood. I'm going to use some 120 grit sandpaper and I'm going to basically sand off any of the rough edges and using a file to finish anything off and just basically wrap up the sanding. Letters like a C or an O actually are taller than your other letters, so you want those to drop beneath the line a little bit. Come in that two and a half this way also and try to get a rough idea now this is up and down and you know not exact Look 
And that's pretty much the layout that I'm that I'm thinking here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to literally trace these down onto the wood so that I have a good idea of where they go and then I'm going to trace it with an exacto knife and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Okay, so we've got all these are lined up. They look good. Then I'm going to take this half inch strips and put them on here too. So the reason I wanted to do this is I want to take an X-Acto and do a basic outline because when I start kind of chiseling out the background what I want to be able to do is find kind of a stopping edge to be able to pull my wood up front. I'm not totally sure if that's going to work but I'm going to try it that way. Okay, with having one of these kind of trimmed in here, I think I'm going to try a chisel tool and see how well that works. Now I picked up a set of these uh, wood chisels from uh, Woodcraft and they were fairly inexpensive. They're not the real expensive brand, but I'm going to try them out on the softwood and see how well they work. What I'm thinking about right now is this rounded chisel like this and I'm gonna bring that in here and just kind of see if I can pull that in. Yeah, I think I can. I actually found a tool within this kit that is sharper and better than the X-Acto knife and worked much better for cutting into the wood and giving me that edge so that I could start carving all the wood out around these legs. I even have shop cap. Now this is Montague who is down here helping and checking it all out too. You know, I have to say there's something cathartic about doing this. I just love it. It's it's pleasing. So I've now cut some half inch by quarter inch strips that I'm going to use to put together a frame. It's a thin frame but it's just going to be equal to the letters that I've cut out and put on top of it. I thought about doing a 45 on the corners but I think just doing straight cuts is going to work just fine. So I mixed up some Mimwax stain that I'm going to use. It's a transparent stain and I kind of blended a couple colors together to make the color that I want to use here. 
and this is going to work great. Now, when you're putting it down, you want to paint around the letters, but it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, you really want it to kind of bleed into the letter a little bit. But what you want to do is leave enough wood showing that when you come back and glue the cutout letters, you've got some raw wood to connect to. And if you notice my hand shaking, it's because I have what's called essential tremors. So this part becomes kind of difficult for me. Well, now that the background has been completely stained, I'm going to use some dark walnut. And I'm going to put a coat on these little half inch strips that's going to become the frame around the edges. Also, to tie in with that dark walnut frame on there, I will do all the edges of the board as well. Now I'm going to use some scrap wood and double sided tape and put all my letters down. And then I'm going to go out and use some Rust-Oleum two times spray paint in kind of a cream color and I'm going to spray these letters. The double stick helps to hold all of them down so that the paint doesn't blow them off your thing and especially with the smaller letters in the please that really helps that. Okay, so now we're at a stopping point for tonight, but basically we've cut out all the letters, we chiseled out the background on the basswood, and then we spray painted the letters, we stained the wood, the sides, and the frame. So tomorrow we can start assembling it. Now, I know it looks kind of rough right now because literally I was letting the paint or the stain kind of soak into the edging of that because what I want is when we put those letters down to have a good clean edge. So I am so excited to get started on this tomorrow and see how this is going to look. going to be using some star bond uh, it's basically like a crazy glue and you can only put a few drops on that's all it needs and it will secure everything now they do use a or come with a accelerator but for this because I want to position the letters before it sets I'm not going to use that
going to glue down the outer framing of this and this is going to just kind of help to set the whole project off. So I have to tell you, I'm really excited about this morning. Got up, got my cup of coffee, had little Sabella, my shop cap, come down with me to get started on getting those letters glued down on there and finishing up this project. Now that I've got those done, I'm going to come back and take it outside and put a clear coat matte finish on it just to kind of seal everything together. I'm really pretty excited how this has turned out. It really is a simple project, but it was so much fun to do and felt good doing it again. Just using my hands and even though I struggled through some of that with my uh, essential trimmers that my hands shake so much, I still managed to get through it, which tells me don't give up, keep trying, and you can work through these things. And you know, I think the thing that made this really fun was it's not perfect. But you don't want it to be. It looks handmade and kind of has that cool look to it. Now I'm going to try one of these similar doing the laser cutter and see how that works in comparison. And I'll do a video on that as well. In the meantime, let me know what you think. Put your comments down in the comment section down below. And well, I'll see you soon.